How would you solve this equation? 5x is equal to 2x. Now some of you might immediately jump to doing this, dividing both sides by x, and then what do you end up with? You end up with 5 being equal to 2. Now we all know that 5 does not equal to 2. So that of course can't be the way to solve this equation. Another way we could try to solve this equation is by subtracting 2x from both sides of the equation, which gives us that 3x is equal to 0. And the only value of x that satisfies this equation is when x is equal to 0. Now in both these cases, we use operations that are perfectly valid. Here we divided both sides of the equation by x and here we subtracted both sides of the equation by 2x. However, see how we got a completely different result based on the way we tried to solve the equation. Now, when we used the correct method to solve this equation, we saw that we ended up with an x value equal to zero. And this highlights one of the reasons why when solving equations, you can't divide through by equal terms or expressions on either side of an equation. Because in this case, x being equal to zero would mean you are dividing zero by zero, which gives you a math error. Another reason is because by dividing through by x, you're actually eliminating an important part of the equation that actually allows it to hold true in the first place. As we saw here, when we divided through by x, we got that five is equal to two, which we of course know is not true. In this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at a couple more examples where you cannot divide through by equal terms or expressions on either side of equations, and you have to manipulate the equation in a different way. So let's have a look at the next example. Solve x minus two times x plus three is equal to six times by x minus two. Now on first look, we see that we have the expression x minus two on both sides of the equation. So you might then go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by x minus two. And that would give you that x plus three is equal to six. And if you go ahead and solve this by subtracting three from both sides, you get that x is equal to three. But the problem with this approach is that we've removed some valuable information and you'll come up to see that we've actually removed the solution. Now, if we were to let x be equal to two, now that would satisfy this equation. Substituting x equal to two, we would get zero on the left-hand side and zero on the right-hand side. However, if we look at the expression x minus two, well, when x is equal to two, this expression is equal to zero, and therefore we can't divide by zero on both sides of an equation. Let's try again, but this time, instead of dividing through by x minus two on both sides, let's expand out the brackets first, okay? So expanding this left-hand side, we get x squared plus three x minus two x minus six is equal to six x minus 12. Collecting the like terms on the left hand side, we get that x squared plus x minus six is equal to six x minus 12. And now if we subtract the six x and the minus 12 from both sides, we get that x squared minus five x plus six is equal to zero. To solve this equation, we now just need to factorize the two terms that multiply to give us six and add to give us negative five are minus three and minus two. And therefore this equation is equivalent to x minus three times by x minus two is equal to zero. And therefore the solutions of this equation are x equals three or x is equal to two. So in this case, using the incorrect approach helped us get one solution, but it didn't help us get all solutions. Let's have a look at our last example. Solve the equation sine of x cos x is equal to half sine x for values of x between zero and two pi. I'm now gonna give you a few seconds to pause the video to try this one out. And when we come back, we'll go through the solutions. Welcome back. So here we've been asked to solve this trigonometric equation and we see that we have sine x on both sides of the equation. However, instead of dividing both sides by this term, let's manipulate the equation by multiplying both sides 
by 2 first. So we get that 2 sine x cos x is equal to sine x. Now if we can subtract sine x from both sides, we get the following 2 sine x cos x minus sine x is equal to 0. So now we can see that sine x is a common factor in these two terms. So let's factorize the left hand side to get the following sine x multiplied by 2 cos x minus 1 is equal to 0. And now we have a product of two expressions that are equal to 0, which means that either sine x is equal to 0 or this expression 2 cos x minus 1 is equal to 0. So now we have two equations that we need to solve. Starting with sine x is equal to 0. Firstly, we can see that we've been given our domain in radians. So let's ensure that we change our calculator to radian mode by clicking on shift menu, clicking on number two for angle input, and then clicking on number two for radian. We'll keep that for later because to solve this equation, if we think about the graph of sine x, all we need to do is find the values of x for which this graph is equal to zero. And we can see that that's at zero pi and two pi within the domain. So these are our solutions to this equation. Let's now go ahead and solve this equation. 2 cos x minus 1 is equal to 0. Adding 1 to both sides, we get that 2 cos x is equal to 1. And dividing both sides by 2, we get that cos x is equal to a half. You can certainly use graphical methods to solve this equation, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna use the cast method. For this particular equation, we can see that cos of x is positive, and therefore we can draw our reference line in the fourth quadrant where cos is positive, and we can also draw this reference line in the first quadrant where all functions are positive. So now we need to work out our reference angles. First of all, let's just draw where this would be on the graph. We always do this by drawing our angles from the positive x-axis towards our reference lines. So now we need to work out our reference angles and we can do that by finding the inverse cosine of a half. So let's go ahead and use our calculator to do that. So if we click on shift cosine of a half, we get that our reference angle is equal to pi over three, which we can now just add to our diagram. You should already know that any reference angle that falls within the first quadrant must be taken as the principal solution, pi over three. And in order to work out the other solution that falls within this domain, we need to work out this angle, which I'm just gonna shade here. Hopefully this diagram allows you to see that this shaded angle is going to be equal to 2 pi minus pi over 3. And if you work that out, you'll get that the other solution is 5 pi over 3. So the solutions of this equation are 0 pi, 2 pi, pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. You can always check your answers by substituting these values of x into the equation and seeing that they satisfy the equation. Well, I hope you understood that. Keep up the good work and I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.